Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again, and uh, have to redo this video because uh, I made a big goof, and I'll tell you about that goof. First of all, before I tell you about the goof I made, I want to thank you all. Uh, we hit 20k on Sunday, and uh, it's a kind of a big deal for me, and uh, and uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate uh, appreciate all the support and uh, throughout the years, and and it really means a lot. Um, we're going to be doing the talk about how I met Arnold either Friday or Monday. I, I don't want to rush that one. I got the burner guy coming. A lot of work getting done. I had the gutters cleaned. It's just this week's been, you know, one of those weeks. Anyway, let me tell you how I goofed up, okay? And I goofed up big time. The uh, saw set, okay, uh, Hanno Conring that, uh, from Canada sent a saw set, but... That wasn't the one that I picked. I was upstairs and, uh, you know, where I have all the viewer projects that have to be done. And I saw a box and, I, you know, I, again, we we have to restore tools we feel like doing. And I saw that and I saw that and I saw, oh, let me do this. And then, but there was no name in the box. The box was from, it had a, uh, a customs label. So I knew it was from uh, uh, outside the United States, but it had no label. No, no. I tried the tracking number. Nothing came up. I couldn't tell where it was from. I couldn't tell who it was from. So it's like, oh no. So now here I have this, you know, those tools, the three that you saw. And I said, what am I going to do? How am I going to find? So I, I started searching my emails and putting in all keywords. I finally put in source set and I got I, these pitches popped up. Okay. So look at these pitches. So when I saw those pitches, I was like, thank God I found out it was Hanno. But then that's not the, the same source set. So what happened was when I started, you know, I, I told you about that I did the uh, King Dick Wrench. Uh, good friend of the show, Lance. Lance Simcox from uh, the UK, from, you know, said, yeah, Johnny goes, you know, I think those, those might have been the tools I sent then. He goes, it don't, so he's such a nice guy. He's like, I don't even care. You know, I'm not looking for a shout out and everything. I just wanted to, you know, it's just kind of weird that the, the guy sent the same exact three tools. You know, I was like, oh, how could I have screwed up so much? Lance, I really am sorry, and uh, and Hanno, I'll be getting to your source set soon, but uh, that's what happened. So I kind of I goofed up with this, but there was no name, no note in the box, so I kind of I, that's why I screwed up. Okay, I apologize for that. So let's get to it, the source set, and uh, let's also let me show you what a source set is first. Now, before we start on the Lance's saw set, let me show you exactly what a saw set does. This is a large saw, and you can see here, each one of these here is the teeth of a saw, right here. And what happens is, the tooth of a saw has what's called a set, which means one tooth is bent a little bit one way, one tooth is bent a little bit this way, this tooth bent the opposite way, and the reason they have alternating bends in these teeth is so that the saw will not bind in the cut. Now, when the saw passes through the cut, it leaves what's called a kerf, and a kerf is nothing more than the saw uh, cut that it leaves. The thickness of the kerf depends on, uh, depends on how thick the blade is and how uh, how your teeth are set on that blade. So if you look at this first one here, this is this is a hacksaw cut. You can see how thin that kerf is. Uh, the next two, this is a new Stanley and this is an old back saw, an old uh, hand saw. Uh, you can see they have very similar kerfs as far as thickness goes. And the last one here is from my chop saw. And you can see that the kerf is very thick because of they use the carbide teeth. And uh, that gives you a thick kerf. Now, this is really important to know because when you're doing carpentry work, uh, this kerf will, will make or break your measurements, you know. If you think you're going to um, not include this little area of missing wood in your measurements, you're going to soon find out that you're going to be way off in, in trying to construct now, The job something. of a saw set was a tool uh, designed to uh, give those teeth a, a slight bend, either left or right, and uh, that would... Uh, make your saw set and uh, that would give you your kerf and, and stop your saw from binding. So very important. It was used uh, years ago. They were really popular and you could still find them all over the place. Okay, so this is the uh, the saw set that Lance picked up at a boot sale, uh, which is very much like our flea markets here. And you can see this is a CK model saw set, which is a, a very good brand. Uh, they made very high quality tools, scissors, things like that with a lot of embellishments. And this is no 
different. You can see how nicely it is, but you can also see the type of rust it has. It has a, you know, a rust that's been on there for many years. And, and uh, in order to get that off, especially with all the grooves, we're going to soak this in vinegar for a few hours. Not too long because it is a cast item and we never want to take it to the point where it starts eating into the actual tool itself. Okay, here we are after a couple hours of soaking in, uh, probably a half a day of soaking in vinegar. And now we didn't want to soak it too much because this is a cast item and sometimes the vinegar can be a little bit strong and, and we don't want to eat into anything. Now, if you want to get good results with vinegar, um, here's what you have to do. You have to soak it and every few hours, take it out of the vinegar, use one of these wire, these hand wire brushes and scrape it down and just, uh, you know, give it a good brushing and you'll see it comes out and then put it back in the vinegar a couple hours later, do it again, the whole thing. And that's how you get this kind of result. You know, if you think you're just going to plop it in there, take it out, it's going to come out like this. It doesn't. You have to use a little elbow grease. Now we could see here that you can see on this side it says CK warrantied and over here you could see it says German make warrantied and uh, this is just a beautiful saw set because you can see the all the embellishments that have now we did not use the uh, rotary wire brush but we will in a minute we're going to take everything apart um, after I took it out of the vinegar I sprayed it down with WD-40 I didn't want it flash rusting before today but um, then we'll demonstrate how it works so we're going to take it apart now hit on the wire brush we cannot disassemble the wrench because it is riveted together so uh but that's okay because it's super smooth everything will work just the way it was but we want to clean it up so let's get to that right now okay so we uh this our post wire brush evaluation you could see here all the rust is gone a little bit of forging marks not too much you know because this is again but we're going to see if we can, again, we don't want to do much to this because this is uh, really coming nice. So let's uh, let's get to it. We're going to do a lot of hand sand just to make things the way it's, you know, a tribute to the person, not only that owned it, but also that uh, designed and, and uh, patented it. Now, here's why we go that extra step. See here, this is what the pliers, uh, the saw set looked like before the casting. You see all that casting marks? I mean, it's not bad, but look at the difference here. You see here, and that's not even finished, but you see the difference between that and that. And that's what we try and do on all these areas around that doesn't have the embellishment. And that really makes the uh, tool pop. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this CK saw set looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Let's take a look at what we got here and how we finished it off. First of all, uh, isn't this a beautiful tool? You know, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of saw sets, but <clears throat> the ones I have are usually plain. This one is so ornate. Uh, what we did is we took off all the rust, the, the forging marks that we could get at, uh, cleaned everything up, polished everything, and then we filled in all of the mar everything here with that. We flooded it with that ink like consistency paint. You could see that, so it really highlights all the lines, even here. Even the marking lines filled everything in with black, polished it. <laughs> Look at that. That is just superbly beautiful, isn't it? What a nice tool. You know, who made this? But, uh, uh, who designed it actually I even filled this in with black it's just just beautiful huh let me show you how it works because it's uh, very interesting uh, simple but just works so well so smooth um, here it is here's your ledge here this is where the saw will lay on here and there's a little notch in here that the tooth of the saw will fall into now that notch by loosening here is you can adjust it up and down by how how far you want the saw to come down and then when you squeeze it, that little anvil here will make contact with the tooth and give it the bend that you want. And you do every other one, and then you turn the saw over and you do every other one again. So that's how you get both sides. And uh, let me show you what it looks like when you put the saw in. Okay, here's a, a saw blade we're going to experiment on. We'll rest it onto the ledge here like this. We bring it down until the tooth goes into the slot of the stopper. Press it down. And that's it. 
Then we move, we skip a tooth, go to this one here, press it down. You can see what happens. It'll push it down. Now, again, you could raise this up and down so that you get the right angle on the, on the, the uh, saw tooth. And you can see that uh, the reason you have to do that, you can see the set on, on this particular saw. And you can see the reason you have to do this is because this is a very good set on here. You can see here, very pronounced. But as you use a saw, this is new, old stock. As you use a saw, these things will straighten out and flatten out. So you have to reset a saw every so often when it starts to bind up on you. But this one here has a nice set to it. And, uh, and that's how this tool works. Isn't that beautiful? Now, as tool enthusiasts, I think we can all agree that it was such a nice time when uh, tool manufacturers took the time to put these embellishments into their tools, the engravings and things like that, to, to sell their tools and to make them stand out because they took such pride in that. And you know that's what's missing in today's market and so many things, not just tools. This is a real gem. Now, I know what you're thinking. I probably could have snuck some Scout Crafter Red in there somehow or another in the lettering or something. But on this one, I just wanted to keep this one kind of a, a, puri a purity kind of uh, restoration. And then, you know, we got two more saw sets to do, uh, both ornate ones, including Hanos. But uh, we'll get to them and then we'll see what happens with them. But uh Again, Lance, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Sorry about the goof up. And thanks very much to all of you for the 20,000. I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, I could have snuck some South...